Many students seem to find arpeggios difficult to master, but this is not really surprising because they require quite a complex technique with many elements blended together in quite subtle ways. So what are these elements that we need to blend together? First of all, there's the arm, which makes the hand travel up and down the keyboard. There's the thumb, which needs to travel under the hand to reach its note, with a special swivel joint. There's the rotation of the forearm, that's the two bones of the forearm revolving around each other. So this way is called supination and that way is called pronation. There are the fingers themselves which keep changing spacing, keeping the hand flexible. They can also be curved and they can straighten. I'll show with the left hand. help the thumb reach its node. And there's also the movements of the wrist, the lateral movements, like that. But please use these very, very carefully and as little as possible, because playing with the wrist at an angle can cause injury. So first I'm going to talk about the movements of the arm and the wrist. So we'll start playing our C major arpeggio, my arm hanging loosely by my side. C, E, G. Put my thumb under to reach the C and I can't actually reach it. I can only go as far as the B in this position. So I'll try to solve that problem just by using my wrist. I can just do it. My arm coming out a wee bit to help. Just reach but my wrist's at quite an extreme angle. Then I turn my wrist back again. Same thing again. So this is obviously not ideal, because to start with, playing with your wrist at an extreme angle isn't very good for you. It can cause injury over time. And also, this fishtail movement can slow, slow you down. Okay, so now I'm going to use arm movement to solve the problem of putting the thumb uh, under instead of using the wrist. So here we go. Move my arm out so I can reach the C easily. My wrist and arm alignment is fine. Now I have a problem getting to the E unless I bring my arm in again. So out. So obviously this isn't ideal either because I end up sort of chicken wing effect. This is particularly bad coming down. Quite often when people are learning arpeggios for the first time, they bring their elbows in to make the, th the arm comfortable on the thumb. And then you actually get locked. You can't actually bring the third finger over the thumb in that position. You have to bring your elbow out again to get back onto the G. So you get that kind of effect. So clearly we're going to need a blend of those two movements, a bit of wrist and a bit of arm. So here we go again. I move my arm out so I can just reach the C quite comfortably, but no more than I need. And then just a little movement of the wrist to do that. Now I'm going to leave my arm where it is, and it just requires a very small movement of the wrist to get onto the E again. So I'm not having to bring my arm in. Arm continues to travel up. You can reach the C comfortably. A little movement of the wrist here to get to the E. Coming down. Leave my elbow where it is. Turn over to the third finger. Keep my arm travelling down. So a good rule is to lead with the elbow when going up or outwards, down with the left hand, up with the right hand, and lead with the hand, letting the elbow follow on the way down. So I'm leading with the elbow,
coming back. I keep my elbow out, don't bring it in as you come down to the thumb. The elbow has to follow and then it's easy to turn over the thumb. Now our thumbs are very special. They, we have a, a, an amazing saddle-shaped joint in here which makes our thumbs different from all the other apes in that we can swivel our thumb around. It automatically swivels around here so that we have what's called opposition, which means we can do really clever things with our fingers and thumbs together, what we call pulp contact. So our thumbs well, it swivels around underneath, um, but there is a popular misconception amongst um, some pianists that the thumb always plays on this part, because that's what we see when we play. Thumb's gone under and played, and when I see it again, it's still playing on the same part. Actually what has happened is that the thumb has gone underneath and turned around and it's opposing the fingers and it's playing on its nail and you should let it do that because it can reach further in that position and then it swivels back again. If you try to make it play on its side the thumb simply can't reach so far as it can if you do that and let it play on its nail. Now some pianists like to play with their thumbs always over the keyboard and people with larger hands find it more comfortable to let the thumb come off the keyboard. Uh, I do particularly describe the nice big arch below the keyboard and pops up again. Gives your fingers more space. So do whatever is comfortable for your hand in that respect. So another thing about using the thumb, we can use it along with rotation, which we talked about before, turning the bones of the forearm around each other like that. The thumb works like a kind of extension of the big bone along here, the radius, so that when we turn it, the thumb turns with it. The thumb goes further under. We can reach very much further by using this rotation. If we remember to play on the nail as well, I can actually reach a sixth in that position. We don't, of course, need anything like that amount. And if we put it together in a normal arpeggio, we're going to add this. My elbow is coming out, helps the thumb, rotating my arm a little bit, playing my thumb on the nail. And I'm combining these elements to use only a little bit of each one to make a very smooth arpeggio. When you come down the arpeggio again, of course, um, the same thing happens. You rotate over the thumb. The third finger plays very easily on its side there. And then you swivel around and come back again. So like all techniques, it's a matter of combining different ingredients and using a little bit of each one. You'll have noticed that there's a kind of swivel movement that happens when you rotate. So I begin to rotate while I'm playing my second finger. The thumb is already going underneath. Pops up there. I swivel back on the thumb. Land on the second finger. And as I land on the second finger, I'm starting to swivel back again here, to rotate back again here. The thumb plays easily here, back again, and when I come down again, 
reverse happen. So swivel on the thumb here, rotating. Third finger plays on its side. Thumb comes off. I'm swiveling back on the third finger. The thumb can reach comfortably. Do that again. Now this is all very well for moderate speed arpeggios played without pedal, particularly. But as we begin to get faster, something very interesting happens. The technique changes with speed. So while we're rotating around here, making a nice join at a slow tempo, as we get faster, we start to rotate more that way on the third finger and to let go and rotate back again and play the thumb. This is what I call a rotary exchange. We come off, rotate to the right here, the thumb's up in the air, the third finger is down here. When I turn my forearm, rotate, they change places. Thumb is down there on its note, the third finger is ready to go on. The nice thing about that is, as I do that, the third finger automatically goes into the right place to play its G. This is a bit like the use of rotary exchanges in playing um, broken octaves. Little fingers down here, thumb is up here. I rotate and they swap places. The thumb is on the G sharp and the little finger is ready to play here. On the way down, the opposite happens. I rotate on the thumb, little fingers up in the air, thumb is down, they change places. And the thumb is ready to go. That will help you to play very fast arpeggios very easily. But these would normally be slightly detached or played with the pedal. Bear in mind that as with all the other elements that we've talked about, the movement becomes smaller as you get faster, so that it can be barely noticeable when you're playing at speed.